Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start looking at pathfinding by using the pathfinding service to find the best path from this green block right here to this red block over here. All right, so let's go and run the code and take a look. So what you see happening right now is Roblox pathfinding service is finding the best path between those two different blocks, and it's illustrating that path by using parts along the way. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so as far as the setup goes for this project, we just need a few different things. The first thing we need is a starting block. This one is just a green part that I labeled start in the Explorer menu. We're also going to need an ending point. So this is a red part that I named finish over here in the Explorer menu. You can create a maze if you want to, or maybe just have different obstacles on the screen. We're also going to create an empty model and call that path. And lastly, we're going to add a script to the workspace. The first thing we're going to do on this script is just make a couple variables as references for the different objects in the game. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to say local path parts is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot path. So this is a reference for the model. Next, we're going to say local start is equal to game dot workspace dot start. So this is a reference for the green part. We're going to do one for the red part as well. So this will be local finish is equal to game dot workspace dot finish. After that, we're going to use the pathfinding service. So we're going to say local pathfinding service is equal to game colon get service inside the parentheses will be pathfinding service after that we're going to define our path object so we'll say local path is equal to pathfinding service colon and then create path next we're going to take path and use colon and then compute async inside the parentheses will be the starting position and the ending position so we'll say start dot position so that'll be our starting point and this is the green part Next will be the ending position, so this will be finish dot position. So basically what we're doing is we're taking that starting point, which is the green block, and the ending point, which is the red block, and creating a path in between them. Next, what we're going to do is say local waypoints is equal to path colon and then get waypoints. So what we're doing here is we're taking all the different position points in the path and storing that into waypoints. So waypoints will be an array that we can loop through to create the different parts along the path. And to create that loop, what we're going to do first is we're going to say for, and then we'll do underscore comma, and then waypoint in pairs. And then we're doing this from the collection of points that's stored in waypoints. And what we're going to do first with each one is just let's go ahead and print out that point. So we'll say print waypoint dot position. Okay, and if you haven't already, just make sure under the view tab that your output is selected. All right, let's go ahead and run our code and take a look. So for this one, I'm not using play or play here. It's just the run button. And if we take a look at the output once we run the code, then we see we have a collection of points here. And what we're going to do with these points is we're going to create a part at each one so that we can see the path from the green block to the red block. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of our print message. And we're going to say local part is equal to instance dot new. And then we're creating a new part.
And then we can just define some different things about this part. So we'll define its shape. So we'll say part dot shape is equal to ball. We'll do part dot material. And we'll set that equal to neon. We're also going to set its size. So we'll say part dot size. And this is going to be equal to vector 3 dot new. And then we'll just make it pretty small. So we'll say 0 0.5 for each dimension. Now we're going to set the position. So we'll say part dot position is going to be equal to the waypoint dot position. And then we'll anchor it and set can collide equal to false. And lastly, we'll just store all these parts inside of our path model. What you can do if you want to is add a small wait time at the end so that you can see the path kind of forming. And now if we run our code. We can see that it used each position stored in waypoints to create a new part there. And this just illustrates the path from the starting position to the ending position. What you can do is you can try moving the parts to different locations. So let's move this one inside of the maze and have the other one outside of it. And if we run the code now, then it'll create a new path between the two different objects. Okay, so this is going to be the end of this video. We're going to be doing more with pathfinding in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.